What is good, YouTube Quinn Wade basketball analysis coming to y'all. Um, with the playoffs, we're going to continue it. Um, at the end of the day, we look at Memphis. Um, they got out of the first round, and that's a huge accomplishment for them. Like I said before, multiple times, uh, when you look at where, where Memphis was uh, when they drafted John Moran, and they continue to build momentum um, with him and his organization, it's a good thing to see them get out of the first round um, against Minnesota. I already knew that they had beat the Wolves, um, but now it's done. You know, they got the Wolves out of the way. They got a tougher challenge um, right now against the Golden State Warriors, and this is the team that they eliminated in the playing tournament last year. But this is just a different team um, this year. Golden State, they're locked. They're loaded. Steph is feeling better. He's doing better. Um, he had a couple 30-point games in a prior series. And, you know, the Grizzlies just got a tough challenge. Um, I've seen that they, they respect their opponent. Um, they know Golden State is a tough team. Memphis is the number two seed. So they have home court advantage still. And, you know, at the end of the day, we'll see um, if this Memphis Grizzly team is, is a legitimate contender um, now that they get, you know, better competition. Um, like everybody that know basketball and everybody that has been following this playoff journey and the Grizzlies are still trying to win a title uh, for the first time, especially with John Moran as their franchise player. I, I really just look at it like it can be tough um, for a young player um, to get through things like that. Obviously, um, like we've seen with Luka and other players, it's emotional to get out of the first round, but the journey continues. Uh, we'll see um, what happens in this series. Desmond Bain has been amazing uh, for the Grizzlies throughout the season and throughout the playoffs this year, and you just hope he continues it. A good, a great three-point shooter um, that, that, that really fits what this team is trying to do. Ja still kind of finding himself. He's, he's a young player. Um, it's part of the maturation process and seeing them get to the basket, seeing them facilitate, seeing them struggle in moments, seeing them struggle in big games and, you know, seeing his teammates be there um, to help him out is what they've been doing throughout the whole season. And, you know, that's why they got out of the first round against the Timberwolves. So, you know, when I look at this team, they're still struggling offensively. They're still struggling to, to find consistency. Um, defensively and offensively but you know to me at the end of the day this is a young team this is a team that's still trying to figure out how to win this is a team still trying to figure out how to win a title something that they haven't done with this group um, it's a challenge it's going to be tough but to me at the end of the day that's what the playoffs is all about you know what I mean and um, these things is something that will test them these things are something that um will get them, you know, the scars and the battles will prove, you know, if they're really ready to be a championship team this year. And um, we'll see if they actually get that done. So when I look at Ja, this is a testament of his greatness. Can he lead them further than the first round? Um, now that he has done it, can he lead them to, to the third round? You know, the goal is to win a title. If you Memphis, everybody been going crazy saying Ja Moran is MVP and he had his all-star starting season and he got the first round this year. But how, how far can he go? How far can he take this Memphis Grizzlies team and organization? And um, we'll see if he's able to do that. We'll see if he's able to accomplish that. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's part of being a franchise guy. That's part of being a franchise savior. And. Uh, we'll see if Ja Morant can actually deliver that by putting out a legitimate championship team, which is the Golden State Warriors. And I didn't really feel like Minnesota was on that championship level. That's why they're a seven seed. But to me, that's what the Grizzlies are still trying to figure out. You know, how can we win? How can we play our best basketball? How can we, you know, get the best out of this team? And seeing guys like Dylan Brooks make shots and defend seeing guys like Jaron Jackson still struggle offensively, still struggle um, with the fouling. Um, we still see, you know, guys like Steven Adams finishing at the rim and, you know, setting screens and playing hard. But this is what they've been 
this is what they have, and you know they're just gonna have to compete and play the best basketball that they can as a team, and we'll see if they're able to be um, a legitimate contender. And like I said, this is a testament for them. You know, they're happy that they're the second seed. They're happy that they're getting their respect um, around the league. They're happy that they're getting their respect um, as, as an organization um, with this, you know, current version of the Memphis Grizzlies, but they still have to get it done. You know, seeing how they play with a stagnant um, play, guys still miss shots. Guys still don't know um, who to trust, who to take them, you know, to the next level, who who can finish games for them, who can close games for them. And um, this is the, a test, you know, this is probably the ultimate test for the Grizzlies, you know, going against a team that has won titles, going against a team that's trying to get back on their championship, you know, ways that they was years ago, which is the Golden State Warriors. We know that Steph was an all-star this year. We know that Draymond was an all-star. We know that Andrew Wiggins was all, is an all-star this year, too. And um, at the end of the day, you have a team that defends well um, in the Golden State Warriors that can put multiple defenders on John Morant. They have Wiggins. You know, they have Iguodala. Um, they have, you know, Draymond Green. Um, they have Klay Thompson and, and other wings and guards on this entire roster. Like I said before, and everybody that's a Warrior fans knows that this team is loaded. You know, this team has more firepower than the Grizzlies. So to me, I'm going to go with the Warriors. And to me, this is a more easier pick um, than, you know, people think. You know, when you look at the fact that Steph is still playing good enough. Like I said, they don't need Steph to be the old Steph because this team is way more loaded. They have more scoring. They have more explosion than they had, you know, years ago. This is this season. And to me, that's the thing that makes this Warrior team so dangerous, you know, looking at all the shooters and all the spacing and all the cutters that they have on this roster, just too much for a team like Memphis. They, they don't have the discipline they foul a lot. They have communication problems. They have breakdown problems. They have inconsistencies offensively, and they they get stagnant. You know, Memphis is a team that get lost. Memphis is a team that you know still have things they're trying to figure out, which young teams go through, um, especially a team that's trying to go from rebuilding to a playoff team to trying to make a legitimate run at a championship. And that's why I love this test for them um, against the Warriors and. I think the Warriors going to be ready. Um, they had a little bit of, of, of trouble with a team like Denver, as we've seen in the series before. But Ja, he can get 30. He can get assists. He can score when he wants to. Um, but he just kind of have the same type of problem with Denver. Like Denver, to me, um, Denver is a team that didn't have consistent scores, has stagnantness in them, um, relied a lot on Jokic, who I think is a significantly better scored in John Morant. He scores more efficiently. Um, he's a better um, playmaker, a better passer. But, you know, that's the difference. You know, Ja is still figuring some of these things out. Jokic is a guy that has his game solved and figured out. And, and that team is built around them. They just wouldn't help. You know, Memphis is healthy. They're hungry. They're scrappy. They're going to come at the Warriors. But the Warriors just have too much firepower to me. Um, they just have too many weapons. They have too many ways to exploit a team that's still learning, to exploit a team that's still trying to figure things out. And to me, the Warriors, now that they're definitely more healthy than they was throughout the regular season, they should be able to get to, get this series done similar to how they did against Denver. You know, you, you got a team with one guy um, that can really do damage and guys that, you know, still trying to figure out their game and guys that still, you know, kind of spotty. Um, offensively, and then you got a team like the Warriors. Clay is a 20-point scorer. Um, Wiggins can get you buckets. Steph can still get you 20 to 30. Jordan Poole is a weapon that you don't really know what he's going to go for. Is he going to go for 20? Is he going to go for 30? Is he going to go for 25? Um, then you have um, shooters like like yeah like that can you know but uh, you know they got centers that can shoot. Um, they have a lot of size. They have a lot of depth and. You know, they have a lot of energy. They have a lot of weapons. So when you look at the fact that the Warriors have shooters everywhere, they have a guy that can explode and Steph. They have guys that can explode like Clay and Jordan Poole. And they have guys um, like Draymond and Andrew Wiggins, Kaminga, Otto Porter. And, you know, the show can go on and on. 
And Gary Payton is a guy that can bring effort, energy, muscle, and can defend Ja and other guys on his roster with his speed and athleticism. And he's a guy that care and play hard. And he's been a solid defender. So the Warriors, to me, just match up perfectly against, against a team like Memphis. When you look at the size that they have, the weapons they have, the switchability that, that they have, the more you know firepower and inconsistency with it, um, then the, the Memphis Grizzlies is just too much, you know, like Destiny say, it's just a little bit too much for a team like Memphis. You know, Memphis is a team that's going to fight. They're going to do whatever they can. They're going to compete, and we're going to give them credit for that, like we already done throughout the entire season and playoffs. But to me, Golden State just have too much firepower. You know, Golden State, they defend, um, they compete, they're fun, they're exciting, but they can obliterate their opponent, and we've seen that in the Denver series where Denver hung around, they kept it competitive, but Golden State, they can defend, they can score, but once they hit that eruption level, um, it, it, it's just annihilation, extermination, and obliteration, and Memphis just don't have enough, you know. They, they're going to keep it close, they're going to keep it fun, but Golden State going to defend them, lock them up, outplay them, outmuscle them, outsmart them, um, and just tear them up. Um, throughout, you know, every aspect of the court just because they know who they are, they have their identity, they know their game, and, you know, they just going to do their thing. So, to me, um, I love what I see out of this Warriors team. Memphis, you know, they just don't have enough. Um, they just don't have enough um, in this particular matchup. But this is this is how the playoffs are. You go against better competition, better coaches, better players. And Golden State, honestly, to me, is a significantly, significantly better team than Memphis. And people forget that that Golden State team last year, they didn't have the talent and firepower that they have this year. And that team was still a playoff caliber team. That was an above 500 team last year with Steph just playing at an MVP, all NBA first team level. And this year, he did the complete opposite, and this team won more games. And it was beat up, and it was toe up, and it was nowhere near as healthy as they wanted to be. And they won a lot of games, and, you know, they obliterated Denver still trying to, you know, figure things out. And now they got more practice. Now they're more healthier. And now the goal is, you know, to get to the conference finals and try to see if they can win another championship um, with this, you know, with, with this group of guys with Clay Steph. And Dre, and this is a, a, a run where the goal is to recapture, you know, the championship glory, and uh, we'll see if they do it. The first step um, was to get out of the first round. Now it's to beat Memphis, and then we'll see what they do, what well, whoever their opponent is next next round. But to me, um, the Warriors is just on another level. They, they just too dynamic. Um, they just have way too much firepower. Just match up perfectly to me against a team that's really one star dominant right now um, in the Memphis Grizzlies, and they just have way too much, too many wings, way too many guys they can throw at Ja throughout a seven game series, and they just have way more firepower too. And I'm just gonna go with Golden State. I'm gonna go Golden State in five, um, just because this particular matchup to me benefit Golden State more than Memphis, but um, that's why um, I'm feeling a little bit better for the people that want to know. Um, Y'all stay blessed. Quinn Wade basketball announcer signing out. Do your thing and, you know, um, 